transcutaneous pacing is typically used in an emergent situation versus transvenous pacing. It's used in a more controlled environment such as an emergency room or in an intensive care unit, possibly in lieu of a permanent pacemaker. So in today's video, let's break it down and talk about temporary pacing as there are three different types to discuss. This includes your transcutaneous pacers, transvenous pacers, and your epicardial wires. But before we dive in, my name is Christina, nurse practitioner. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get into it. Some reasons for temporary pacing with my experience has been from post cardiac surgical patients or from reversible causes such as a patient that was placed on a beta blocker and had an overdose such as labetalol. So you know those meds ending in lol. In this setting it can cause symptomatic bradycardia. So the patient may present with symptoms of feeling faint, confused, maybe low blood pressure so they're hypotensive, dizzy or shortness of breath. And before resorting to a temporary pacemaker you may consider giving glucagon because it can help increase heart rate and blood pressure or also giving atropine. So let's discuss the functionality of transcutaneous pacing. This is what is commonly used during an emergency situation with ACLS in full gear. So two large external pads are placed on the patient's chest which is attached to a monitor what we call a defibrillator which functions as a pulse generator. This is ideally only used for short term like in lieu of a permanent pacemaker. This may actually be uncomfortable and painful for the patient so it may require a sedative during use. So be mindful for the patient's needs that they are comfortable and pain free. Next on the list are your temporary transvenous pacers. These have wires attached to a generator on one end that is accessed through the right ventricle via the femoral vein or subclavian vein also known as IJ internal jugular which the leads or wires are attached to an external pulse generator. This is more reliable reliable and comfortable for the patient. The other temporary pacers are your epicardial wires that are placed during cardiac surgery by the surgeon and sutured into the pericardium. When a patient is stable, the wires are pulled out from the discretion of the cardiac team. However, these wires are typically AV placed that allow for more complex pacing if needed. And the way we wrap the leads keep the patient safe and allow for immediate access in an emergency situation. So as a nursing pearl, if you you have the opportunity to shadow an ICU nurse or CCU nurse, be sure to ask your nurse to show you how the wires are grounded to capture the full experience of the role of a CCU nurse caring for a patient with epicardial wires. And as a quick review, something you may be tested on in your exams are understanding the two major modes of pacing. So you have your synchronous, which is your demand pacing. So this would be temporary pacing. This is where the pacemaker will sense the patient's own beats versus asynchronous, which is fixed rate. Um, this is pacing such as transvenous pacing. This wraps up my review on temporary pacers. Be sure to check out one of my other videos and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.